it was always just a distant account. Okay, there's a flood, people died, the earth is judging wickedness. The flood was coming to save Noah, and the wicked were going to be destroyed with that flood. But it became personal to me when I thought about those people from the perspective of the people who are around me right now who are not believers. These people that were on the earth at that time were real human beings, and there were probably billions of them, just like the people that we pass on the streets every single day. They were just like our old boyfriend or old girlfriend that we still think about when our minds are silent in the evening. Or they're just like the people that we go and we see at work every single day that are so dear to us. And the people that we greet in our neighborhoods that we think, boy, that's just a really nice, wonderful person. I have friends all over the world from my travels as I traveled when I was younger. And I've made many, many more friends since the electronic age. Every single one of these people is a real person with a real beating heart. They have real hopes, they have real desires, they have real aspirations, and every single one of them is either in Adam or they are in Jesus Christ. These are the only two options that the Bible gives us. Noah was a patient man, and he certainly preached to all of these people that he came in contact with right up until the time of the flood. He did it by words, and he certainly did it by his actions. And today, even today, he is preaching to us by his actions for people who are willing to listen to the story of Noah. He was patient in waiting on the Lord's timing, and his patience must have included immense sadness. If I, if Charlie Garrett was to consign the world to destruction while being saved out of the world and from that destruction, my heart would be broken for the people of the world that were being left behind. I'd be telling them about God. I'd be telling them about his love for the world. I'd be telling them about living righteously. And I would be telling them about his son, Jesus Christ, and how he affects my personal life. This is what I would be doing if I loved those people that were on the highway to eternal separation from God and consignment to hell. But wait a minute. The world is consigned to destruction. And some people are going to be saved out of it. And I am one of those people. I need in my own personal life to get back to telling people about God, about his love for the world, about living righteously, and also about his son, Jesus Christ, and what he means to me. This is what I need to be doing, and all of us here need to be doing, if we really, really love those people. So I would ask you, oh God, to give me a heart once again for the lost people of the world and to give me a desire to tell people about this great pardon from sin, the forgiveness that is offered through Jesus Christ. And I would ask you, God, to break my heart once again, just like it was when I met you, when I first came to you on my knees, crying in tears for months at the immense love that was displayed in my own life in Jesus Christ, because these people really are on the wrong highway, and they need to know about Jesus Christ.